name. Our scripture this morning will be taken from Psalms 27, verses 1 through 4, and it reads as follows. You, Lord, are the light that keeps me safe. I am not afraid of anyone. You protect me, and I have no fears. Brutal people may attack and try to kill me, but they will stumble. Fierce enemies may attack, but they will fall. Armies may surround me, but I won't be afraid. War may break out, but I will trust you. I ask only one thing, Lord. Let me live in your house every day of my life to see how wonderful you are and to pray in your temple. The Lord's word is already blessed. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, we come thanking you for this precious opportunity of prayer. You are God. You are the only sovereign Thank you. And on behalf of your people, I thank you for being who you are. Thank you, Lord, that you have anointed your church to be your representatives in the world. Help us to see what you see. Help us to be present where you are. Help us to be involved in what you are doing. We thank you, Lord, and we ask you for a fresh anointing that the world may see you in us and come to glorify you for who you are. For you are God, the only sovereign God. And it is in the precious name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Our announcements are as follows. On this Sunday, we are celebrating our male court's annual anniversary. All presidents and members are asked to please prepare a love offering to help support this ministry. Thank you so very much. Our sick report is as follows. Sister Gertrude Jones, West Hampton Care Center. Sister Lucinda Ross, Southside Hospital, for sure. Brother Michael Mason, the County Bay Medical Center. Brother Tilden Christian, Hospital in Alabama. At home, Sister Erlene Trent, Sister Anitra Brown, Brother Sean Reed, Brother Tom Langhorn, Sister Ida Wolf, Sister Jody Green, Sister Sharon No, Sister Barbara Harris, Brother Louis Davis, Sister Caroline Love, Sister Sandra Blue. Please continue to pray, send cards, call, and visit. Remember Pastor's family in your prayers and let us continue to pray for one another. Anyone who has a name for the sick list, please feel free to call, text, or email Sister Annie Collins. And also please let us know if someone can be removed from the sick list. That ends the reading of our sick list.
let us rejoice and be glad in it. This morning, our scripture will come from Acts 20 and 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified for a better place in Christ. A couple of weeks ago I spoke on putting on the whole armor of God. I spoke about the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, and the shoes of the gospel of peace. From Ephesians 6, from 14 to 15. But as I read on, there is a lot we can connect to putting on the whole arm of God. So I took the next three pieces with an understanding in Acts so that as we dress our spirit, as we stand, it's for a better place in Christ. So now we speak of the shield of faith. When Paul wrote this passage, Roman soldiers carried shields that were covered with heavy animal power. Before a battle, they would dip them their shields into water so that when the fiery darts hit them, the wet hide would extinguish the darts. In a similar way, a Christian shield of faith needs to be regularly dipped in the water of God's word. I like that. It's the word of God we're talking about putting on. And we take that piece of armor, which is our faith, and we dip it in the word so that when the spirit of evil comes at us, Whatever he's shooting at us, it doesn't hit us because as soon it sizzles out. To apply it, we find verses that feed our faith and fill our world, fill our world with that. We set our faith on God's character, not on a circumstance. Mm -hmm. We think of the characters of God. We think on his kindness and all his love. We think on him being unchangeable. And as we put our faith on his character, then whatever the circumstance is, we have on our shield, we're covered, so we don't watch the circumstance because we understand clearly, thank you God, he has full control. 
in listening and looking at the different pieces of the armor of God, Paul said, Above all, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Ephesians 6, 16. When Satan attacks with doubt, the shield of faith turns aside the blow. When temptation comes, Faith keeps us steadfast in following Jesus and Jesus alone. We are able to withstand all the devil's fiery darts because we know in whom we believe. 2 Timothy 3 and 12. This faith is not something that comes from within us. We have to understand this part. It's a gift to us from God. He gives each of us a measure of faith. Romans 12 and 3. Then as we walk with him, that faith grows and develops until it becomes a shield protecting us and allowing us to live a victorious life in Christ. The victorious life in Christ doesn't mean that we're not going to go to the doctor and maybe hear something we don't want to hear. It doesn't mean someone's going to call us on the phone and tell us something financial that just unexpected, but we are victorious anyway because we're covered with the shield of faith. This was Paul's experience. He said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. That's marvelous for us. But we got to believe, wash in the Word, put on our garment, and our faith in the Son of God, who loved us and gave himself for us. Galatians 2.20. And at the end of that life of faith, Paul declared, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I kept the faith. 2 Timothy 4 and 7. That could be your experience as well. As you use the shield of faith to turn aside everything, everything that Satan hurdles at you with no fear and no anxiety. I give you the verses because the concentration is on the Word of God and the power in the Word of God that makes this garment that we're putting on so powerful for us. Now we get to the mind. Lord, help us. Helmet of salvation. Paul says, take the helmet of salvation. Ephesians 6, 17. Salvation comes the moment we place our trust in Jesus. Death and resurrection. As the payment for our sin. But salvation is also worked out through a lengthy process. It's in that process 
of sanctification. From Christ's death. Not something we give ourselves, but it's through him on the cross. The helmet of salvation, <coughs> like the breastplate of righteousness, rests on the work of Christ to save us. But also involves us as we journey with the Lord. And allow him to work that salvation into every part of our lives. The battlefield of the mind is the primary place. Spiritual battles are for. The Lord works his feelings. His feelings. Well, we say this God has feelings. Yes, because it said for Lazarus, Jesus wept. And the Lord works his feelings and truth into our perspectives <coughs> while the enemy fights for strongholds to bind us. That's the helmet of salvation. We cover our mind for that thought came out our mouth. But first we thought it. That thing we did, we shouldn't have did, came out of our mind because we thought it first. So when we protect our thoughts, Surround our thoughts with the scripture. We can fight off anything that's telling us to do something that's not in line with what the Lord would have us do. Mm. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Colossians 3 and 2. Remember the Lord's character and faithfulness in Scripture as well. Wash. Wash. There we are again with washing and cleansing with the Word and the renewing of your mind. Romans 12 and 2 says, Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to be tested and approved. Because it's the state of your mind. With the helmet on, no matter what comes through your eye gate or your ear gate, the word is in your mind and it blocks it. So you won't react on it. Because even though you see it, it might not be right. Or even though you hear it, it doesn't mean it's right. The helmet protects the head, perhaps the most valuable part of the body, since it is the seat of thought and the mind. When we have a sure knowledge of our salvation, we will not be moved by Satan's deception when we are certain that we are in Christ with our sins forgiven. Satan will tell you you're not forgiven. Satan will tell you many things. But Jesus died 
to cover our sins. So in our repentance and our just forgiving God, we say he did that for us. Satan can't take that from us. And in that believing, we will have a peace that nothing can disturb. Sometimes knowing it is not enough. It's, just, it's not enough. I can witness that it's not enough. You've got to actually do this right here. It's got to be a part of who you are. Otherwise, you'll have anxiety and palpitation. It's not supposed to disturb you because of your trust and your dress. Your spirit is dressed so you can rest and be assured that God will. It's in his word. Yes, if we confess our sin, Jesus is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. First John 1 and 9, God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. <coughs> he who has the son has life. First John 5, 11 and 12. You see, that's why it's important to get dressed from your head to your toe and the spirit every day, all day. The word. Stay in the word. You say, well, I'm working. I can't read my Bible. I'm in the store. I can't read my Bible. Reverend McElroy says she was in line waiting to pay, but she was reading the Bible. So here you can. If one can, we all can, because God died for all of us. Now, this is my favorite, because it's the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The authority and the power that comes from the Word. The explanation of this piece of armor is right there in the verse. It is the Word of God, and it is the only piece of armor that is both defensive and offensive. When we are tempted, the most effective weapon we have is his word has given to us power as believers is the sword of the spirit which is the word of God now Jesus modeled this beautifully during his temptation in the wilderness we know the sword of the Spirit is the only weapon. Jesus used this weapon when Satan tempted him in the wilderness. To each of Satan's effectively trying to lead him into sin. So when Satan come at us, if he was bold enough, and he knew who Jesus was, he was bold enough to tempt Jesus three times. And what did Jesus do? He came back again with the 
word. The sword of God's word. Both protects us and destroys our enemy, the devil and his temptation. We can follow Jesus' example. We can be what and who the word says we are. And if you remember I said the Roman soldiers had two swords. And if you go look up a picture, Google it, you'll see a short sword like this and a long sword in their hand. But our long sword is the word of God. We grab our sword and we say, no weapon formed against us can prosper. We grab our sword and we say, I am more than a conqueror. We grab our sword. All things work together for the good of those that believe. But sometimes the spirit of evil just wants to get up on you, you know, get real close. You got to get that short sword. And then you got to back him up. You know, get up, back up, back up. That's that short sword when he's all over you trying to tell you you can't, you won't, you never will. Just back him up. So my favorite use of the short sword is Romans 8. See, he's telling you you can't. He's telling you you won't. But Paul said, as he get up on top, you know, I got you now. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities, powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature, hallelujah, shall be able to separate us from the love of God. God is in Christ, Jesus, our Lord. We got to remember it's the Word. We got to go in here. We've been in here. We done read it many times. I have. I study it. But there's always, always, always more as you dress your spirit for battle. Because it is a battle. And if he's not bothering you right now, you praise God. Hallelujah. Because he's coming. That's his job. He comes to see kill and destroy. But with your long sword and your sh short sword, you ready. You got your shield, the helmet. You ready. Stay ready. I encourage you to stay ready. But then there is Ephesians 18. Prayer. The breastplate of righteousness, I said before, covers your heart. Although prayer is not one of the 
pieces of the whole arm of God. Yet Paul closes his lips by saying, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, Ephesians 6.18. Even when you are clothed with the arm of God, you need to bathe all in prayer. Prayer brings you into communion and fellowship with God so that his arm can protect you. That's everything. You dress now. So it's up to us, to you and me, to decide to put on the whole arm and be victorious. Be who we already are. Victorious? Yes. There's a virus and it's all over the world. So we praise God because we're still here. And we pray that we learn the lesson that is, God is teaching us right now with the whole armor on. We stand no matter what comes. So do sometimes you feel weak? You find yourself giving in to a temptation when you really want to overcome are you ever discouraged? We all face these moments, but clothed in the whole arm of God, the weakness of his children is more than a match for Satan. We're dressed. Yeah, he's coming, but we can stand. That's a guarantee, but first you got to put on the arm. In Jesus, clothed in God's invincible armor, you will be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You will be able to stand and stand and when you've done all you can do, you stand. And what is this you're standing on? I'm fully dressed. I got my armor. I got my soul. It's right here. It's in your mind. So without saying a word, you fight. How do you fight? It's the spirit. It's not even you. That's why you're victorious. That's why the battle is you. And you know, the battle is yours. It's yours and victory because you got dressed and gave the Holy Spirit permission through the word in your mind to fight that was coming at you. I speak this as listening to the news and my God, everything that's being said is going to do this and that and we got to be dressed. We got to dress our spirit. I don't know what's going to happen, but we ready. Yeah, we ready. We're going to put on our armor and whatever comes out. We're going to stand. I have a friend, and she sent me a text. And it was a video on YouTube. And I said, wow. It was a pastor and her family. And it, it was just, they were in their house, and they were singing, 
and it was so good. So I just played it over and over because this is what we got to do. I don't know if you saw it. So if you pray for me, I'm going to do this because I spoke to Satan. You fight on, you fight on, you fight on, church, you fight on. Take the sword in your hand and you fight on, you fight on. Now, it was Sunday morning. And we were sitting in here, but you at home. So I can hear you in the spirit. You said, you fight on, you fight on, you fight on, church, you fight on. Take the soul in your hand and you fight. Amen and thank you. I thank the Lord this morning for my sister, Evangelist Wilder. Our job is that we are to make ourselves available so that God can pour into us so that that which we pour out is not of us, but of our Father who has called us to be his instrument. I thank you, my sister, and I pray for you. Powerful, powerful word. Now, our job is to make the application. Preaching is not entertainment. Preaching is God speaking through his vessel so that he can empower his church for the work that God has called us to. So be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister. Be blessed wherever this life leads you. Let me encourage you. Let me speak life to you. You can depend on God to see you through. And you can depend on me as I depend on you. We're going to pray one for the other. So until we meet again,